folks, it is done. Donald Trump has been formally, officially 100% indicted, and that's according to him and confirmed by multiple sources. Hit the like and subscribe button so we can all enjoy this monumental, historic, epic-making day because he has been indicted federally. This is the second time he's been indicted, of course, but these charges are federal and far more serious, both in terms of the crimes he's been accused of doing, but also, guys, in terms of the years in prison he could face effectively rendering the rest of his life behind bars. Much like with the last time, Donald Trump sort of tried to get out in front of the story and say that he's going to be indicted, but unlike the last time, this has been confirmed by other sources, and he's actually telling the truth. What I have for you are some shocking details that no one else has brought on YouTube yet. You might have seen some earlier videos by Brian Tyler Cohen and others. Those do not have this up-to-date news, which is broken in to some of the latest reporting and confirmation that while we don't know the specific charges yet, we know there are a minimum of seven of them. And that is brand new information, seconds old as I record this. I'm going to read you what Trump said, and then I'm going to play you a breadth of coverage. And there's a couple critical details I want to break down after, because this is vital. It says here, page one, the corrupt Biden administration has informed my attorneys that I have been indicted seemingly over the boxes hoax, even though Joe Biden has 1850 50 boxes at the University of Delaware, additional boxes in Chinatown, and even more boxes at the University of Pennsylvania, and documents strewn all over his garage floor where he parks his Corvette and which is secured, quote unquote, by only a garage door that is paper thin and open much of the time. I have been summoned to appear at the federal courthouse in Miami on Tuesday at 3 p.m. Never I thought possible that such a thing could happen to a former president of the United States who received far more votes than any sitting president in the history of our country and is currently leading by far all candidates, both Democrat and Republican, in the polls of 2024 presidential election. I am an innocent man. This is indeed a dark day for the United States of America. We are a country in serious and rapid decline, but together we will make America great again. And here's just some of the coverage, including some of these brand new details. I'm the first to bring it to you. Watch every second. Savor this historical moment. Paula, you have confirmed indeed that the former president of the United States has been indicted. Aaron, I'm told by an official familiar with the matter that this social media post is correct, that the former president has been indicted. I don't have any details beyond that in terms of the specific charges, in terms of the specific counts, but it does appear that the former president got out ahead of the official announcement from the Justice Department or the special counsel here to announce that, yes, he has been indicted uh, by a federal grand jury in the ongoing investigation into the possible mishandling of classified materials. A part of this, according to a source familiar, there are seven counts uh, in this indictment, uh, which is uh, coming out of South Florida. So, Ryan, take this, what she's saying um, about how all of the work, all of the testimony, everything was done in front of a grand jury in Washington. Does it all just get handed to Florida and then in a week they're able to, to return this with seven counts? What does all this mean? 100 percent. All of the information that they accumulated in D.C. from that grand jury could be transferred over to Florida and just read in for the Florida jury, for the mm -hmm. Florida jury which has been sitting now for a few weeks. So that might have already happened way back when. And then they had maybe additional witnesses, just a few apparently. Then they get presented with the entire package. Then they vote on the indictment. If we've got this many counts, mm -hmm. based on historical practice of when the Justice Department does charge for something like the Espionage Act, I would guess or speculate that each of those counts are a separate offense and that they're different, there's different conduct. Each count might have multiple documents that right. they Right, I mean, because that's what I was wondering is each, is it, is it a count per document or is it a clump and is espionage, I mean, you know, I guess it's, is it possible to, you know, read anything into seven counts? I think it could be, I would guess. Mm -hmm. Right. Could obstruction that, be part of it? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'd go like this. Um, based on the evidence that's publicly available to us, including prior DOJ filings, mm -hmm. And also the New York Times report that explained what the theory of the case was when they tried to pierce and successfully pierced attorney-client privilege. One is obstruction, but isn't, this is not thin. It is also um, the Espionage Act. They said that to Beryl Howell, mm -hmm. the chief judge at the time in D.C. So it's likely those two. Then I would think, in addition to that, could be defiance of a grand jury subpoena. That's another one, another form of obstruction. I also think that they will probably go forward on classified documents charges. So also other parts of the Espionage Act, they're not just about retention of documents, 
but other parts that are specific, of, of, that, it, that refer to national defense information, but classified documents. I, I want to get right to our Chief Justice Correspondent, Pierre Thomas, working his sources over at the Justice Department. Uh, and Pierre, uh, what are you learning from uh, the people you're talking with? Well, David, we have been told by sources who have been following the case that Trump is expected to appear on Tuesday to be processed in connection with these charges. And we've been told by multiple sources that the special counsel had specifically been focusing on efforts to illegally retain classified documents and producing evidence to show that Trump also willfully obstructed the government's efforts to get those documents back. And David, I can put this in perspective. This is perhaps one of the most consequential investigations the Justice Department has done in recent memory. We're talking about investigating a former president who's seeking to be reelected. They knew this was one of the most consequential cases that they've ever pursued. And I'm told that they have built a case month by month to produce compelling evidence to lay out in detail what Trump did in terms of taking the documents from the White House and then what he did in response to a government subpoena to return those documents. Now, we're also being told that law enforcement and sources will be stepping up security in and around that courthouse in Miami uh, because they don't know quite what the response will be. But again, clearly a very consequential moment and we'll be hearing more in the coming hours and days, uh, David. Uh, Pierre, just stick with me here because I know your sources are telling you multiple counts. Catherine's reporting uh, at least seven counts uh, at this hour. And, and Pierre, as you know, uh, these counts range from obstruction, uh, conspiracy, willful retention of documents pertaining to uh, the national defense. Uh, what does this tell you? It would seem it involves more than just the former president when, when you hear conspiracy being listed as one of these potential multiple counts here. When, when you look at the case that they previously laid out in terms of the affidavit for the search warrant in terms of why they went in, it was clear that the government had indications that were, there were people working with the president to perhaps move documents, hide documents. There's a key moment that we've been reporting on for some weeks, David, where uh, apparently after receiving the subpoena, uh, Trump and his associates knew that federal prosecutors were going to come to Mar-a-Lago. And apparently there's surveillance footage from the room where some of these documents were being held in which someone is seen taking the documents out the day before the prosecutors were supposed to get there. And also, David, here's another key thing. Well, you know that the one of the attorneys for former President Trump issued a statement provided to DOJ saying as far as they knew, all the documents had been provided. The FBI then gets a tip that there were still more documents there at Mar-a-Lago. And then when they did that consequential raid, they found more than 100 classified documents, David. Okay, Pierre Thomas, as soon as you learn more from your sources, Pierre, just raise your hand there and we'll come right back to you. Donald Trump says on Truth Social that he's been indicted. Quote, the corrupt Biden administration has informed my attorneys that I have been indicted, seemingly over the boxes hoax, even though Joe Biden has... 1,850 boxes at the University of Delaware, additional boxes in Chinatown, D.C., with even more boxes at the University of Pennsylvania, and documents strewn all over his garage floor where he parks his Corvette, and which is secured by only a garage door that is paper thin and open much of the time. Now, Fox News has not confirmed this, but we are just reporting on what Donald Trump just posted on Truth Social. Let's bring in Charlie Hurt, Fox News contributor. So, Charlie, we were hearing rumors that this was going to happen. The president, former, calls it the yeah. boxes hoax. What does this tell you on the yeah. same day we're learning that the Bidens took $10 million in bribes, supposedly, from Ukraine? I think it's starting to get obvious what's going on here. Um, the fact that, uh, that you have the two, this is no coincidence. Uh, I think it's clearly designed to, you actually had questions for some of the first questions we've seen of Joe Biden about the, the, uh, the, the evidence that's coming out in Congress right now about deep and widespread corruption. This is not rumors. This is not smoke. This is actual evidence of it. The, the, he's been asked about it for the first time. So you see this drop 
on the exact same day. I think that the, the two are very related. I think that uh, I, I think that especially when you step back and you consider that the charges that they're leveling against President Trump are the exact same charges that could be levied against Joe Biden himself and a host of other Democrats, including Hillary Clinton, as well as other Republicans. Um, and the fact that he is the only one being charged is evidence that they're terrified of him. And they realize that if he gets the Republican nomination, he will very likely beat Joe Biden or whoever it is the Democrats put up. They are terrified. That's what that tells you. And we haven't seen the indictment. Fox News has not even confirmed this. We're just reporting what the former president has said. But if you square up the documents that so we have Biden and Obama who are hiding things, Biden still has things in Chinatown in his home with a son who's a drug addict and nothing happens to these people. So when your name is Donald Trump, when you're leading in the polls, you are going to get hit hard. You are going to get indicted until you can't take it anymore. But they picked the wrong guy, Jesse. They picked the wrong guy. And I think that that's why he's so ahead in the polls. And that's why he'll probably win. Guys, this is a big deal. What we now know is that a few things. One, they're doing this case, at least for now, in Miami. That There's some positives and negatives to that. Positives is that it's far less likely that Trump will be able to appeal that the case is invalid because they're doing it in Washington. I think it's probably valid to do it in Washington because the documents were stolen from Washington. But if the main scene of the crime is Mar-a-Lago in Florida, it could well be argued that that's where it needs to happen. It makes a conviction more difficult, but not impossible, and Jack would bring a case to a location that he didn't think was valid and that he didn't think was winnable. So that's partly part of it. The fact that he's been summoned to Miami and not Washington indicates where this will go down. But critically, guys, vitally, they have him dead to rights. Donald Trump is done. This case is easy to prove. The other case, which again, I think they're going to indict him on as well, the J6 you know, conspiracy case, sedition case, obstruction of the proceedings case. That's coming down the pipe too, but that's going to take some time. Right now, today though, we celebrate. We celebrate, but we remain vigilant, understanding that this is a victory for justice, that Donald Trump is not simply going to get away with it. And look, uh, before a man, uh, uh, 12 jurors, uh, men and women, fair and true, everybody deserves a fair trial, even this sadistic monster. But justice doesn't start until you bring him up on charges that he did. If Trump is indeed not above the law, and he commits a crime, you charge him on those crimes. And that's what happened today. Today was the start of justice in the federal realm. And guys, it's not the end, but my goodness, am I happy to see it. I'm just so happy to be here on this journey with you all. And we're going to continue each and every day, multiple times a day, taking this SOB down.